Whenever you're ready, you may begin. Oh man, I don't even get a countdown this time. I just, I just get to go. It's All right, in five, oh. four, three, two, one. Thanks. Hi, I'm Steve, and I play Watcher in this year campaign, which is uh, Project Still. Is it still Waters or still Water? I mean, you've been playing this for multiple months now. If you're not aware <laughs> of the title, still I'm going to have to replace you <laughs> with an electronic keyboard. Electronic keyboard, can you do the intro? Uh, yeah. Let's overlay ARP's normal intro with that. Keep going, D. Davis. <laughs> no, I can't. Or we'll get sued. <laughs> we can definitely no, get right. sued. Start just that. Uh, keep doing that five-second piece over and over. But anyway, in seriousness, uh, it is Project Stillwaters. Dude, 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 dude. Uh, I thought we were doing this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be rude to Steve. He just came back. I think I was doing a different game. I was doing Unreal Tournament. All right. Well, speaking of Unreal Tournament, Steve. Hey, hey, Steve's doing the intro. <laughs> yeah, I'm segueing back into his intro. Uh, it is Project Still Waters, the plural. Uh, there are multiple waters that are still. Uh, we, I wasn't here last time, so to my understanding, what happened was uh, we got into a car that had a giant cup noodle on top of it called the Tiny Cup Noodle. Mm-hmm. And we basically went on a wild adventure in fi involving finding the perfect wheat to make noodles with. Oh, we're making soba. Yes. And uh, Watcher somehow got shot, I think, was being told. He was shot with noodles. He was yeah, shot with noodles. He got a flavor blast. Yes, there was soy sauce. And uh, now there are fighting foodons involved. Yep. The little ramen, the little the ramen literally came to life and is now fighting us. And yeah, it's and, watches, uh, watches dying. It's on this guy's hair. War. That guy's yeah, hair, that guy's is, hair is, is made yeah. out of noodles. Yep. Damn, that's perfect. It's fantastic, uh, even. And I don't actually know what happened. However, I believe that perhaps the following people might know. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, our host, Matt. Matt Prime. I mean, uh, playing Tim Cloud. I mean, he's not Matt Prime. I want to point this out <laughs> for those playing at home. It's been well established that I am Matt Prime. But I am, I am a, the oldest. But I am a prime cut of Matt. Damn. I mean, prime cuts do tend to have a lot of fat in them. I'm yeah. just going to point that out. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're the best flavor. That's true. That is where all the flavor is the umami, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I've got the better mouthfeel. Let's uh, introduce the next person. <laughs> we have Grimith playing Dr. Vec. Neat. And the ever-lovable, ever-esteemed DD playing Jason. M -m 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 Monster kill! Holy shit! He just killed the ramen. Yep, that was... Good job <laughs> defeating all the enemies, Jason. Guys, let's uh, let's play facing worlds instead. And uh, let's celebrate with a nice cup noodle. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Matt Alpha, uh, who is our GM. <laughs> all right, we're doing the Alpha thing now, are we? <laughs> yeah, Still but bras, it's... you know. We gotta, we gotta get down with some tabletop tonight, yeah? No, no, it's Matt Alpha Five. Oh, I see. Oh no! Ay, ay, ay. You know, it's funny that we mentioned that because Final Fantasy had to delay some of that DLC because they, they look like Power Rangers. Oh no. Yeah, they're going to play like these armored suits, and they looked way too close to the re revealed suits of the new Power Rangers movie. So they looked like Guybers. Yeah, something like that. Japanese, Iron Man, whatever you want to go with. So wait, does this mean that David Hayter is going to be in the Final Fantasy XV? Yep, no. and Mark Hamill. No, nice. David, David Hayter is never going to get work in this town again. Oh, man. What? No, he, to he gets. He's. What? C no, Kojima. On. Kojima like put out the burn ball on him. He's he's blacklisted from everything. 
Next. When you're burned. I don't. That's not true. I mean, am I casting shade? I don't know. If Kojima tweets at us, I'll be I'll be honored. I mean, we did get tweeted by CISO today. Yeah. <laughs> we sure for, did. For cheap comedy at just four dollars a month. You can't go wrong. You can't with advertise CISO. for them for free. Not until they give us their own CISO TV show. They need to the first they need to give us like a list of subscription for free smug. Come on, you're doing this. The You're rolling world. over way too wrong? quickly. Yeah, I mean, was I supposed so wrong. to negotiate a contract first yeah. and get a bag with a money sign on it? Yep. Yeah, buddy. No, I'm so rank amateur. Maybe I'm not Matt Prime. I looked it up because I, I didn't like you disparaging my perfect hero, David Hayter. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what he's doing that isn't an indie game that someone had to kickstart the money for. Oh. Well, I mean, oh, damn, I'm two of those smoke. Come on now. Yeah, I know, I know what that's your bread and butter. That's he, fine. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's did a you know. unstained ritual of the night. I mean, does that count as indie or? Uh, um, I mean, like, yes. He got, has, you know, a following. He got that money. And has he day. done any AAA uh, video game titles that uh-oh. aren't Metal Gear? Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's the yeah. warning that we've gone way over time on this intro. <laughs> all right, so see you all next week because we can cut this into like a single video to increase your YouTube monies. He's just in Dragon Age Inquisition, Smug. Okay, so um, last time. Yeah, that doesn't count. Smug. Yes, what actually <laughs> happened? <laughs> Right, what actually happened? You guys were on a station. Flood. You ran into Neted. Neted rolled over and showed you guys his belly because he wants out. So he decided he would go with you guys and take you to the headquarters of VD. Mm, I really should have thought about that before I named them. But oh well, we're too far in and I'm not going to edit all of that. Ah, uh, then you guys came back to your ship with your new crewmate, Nitet, and you discovered that there were a bunch of guys unloading everything out of your ship that one of those dudes who has hair like beautiful, perfect al dente ramen claimed to know Tem. He was disfigured by Tem, and he had killed Watcher, and then... It was going to rapidly deteriorate into some of the old bone throwing that, you know, that this game's so good at. I say that sarcastically, but it's actually pretty good. Now I'm confused. I don't know whether you like it or not. Uh, I kind of do, to be honest. What's better without maps, though? Yeah. uh... These maps are just for visual reference for the viewers on YouTube. Yeah, but nothing for force moves. points and all that jazz. Huh? Yeah, probably. What? Destiny pool? Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll get to that. God. <laughs> You're so eager to throw the bones. Oh, well, we, do, we do often forget it. I just, I just want to make sure the procedures are followed. Shumag, it's been three weeks. There might be some excitement. We're excited. I doubt it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll Bam! your destiny. Nice, oh, nice. Fuckers, bleep that into Criffers. <laughs> Carkers. Carkers. Why did I roll that? Why did I do that? I don't know. That's none of what we needed you to roll. Yeah, maybe I'm just getting all the all the bad rolls out of the way there. Part of the solution. Thank you, nope. gentlemen. No, I wasn't. I was not. All right. So we got even force and destiny points. It's really just destiny points. No, we don't. You guys yes. have more than me. Oh, yeah, we got right. three light side. Three and... to two. That's even. We got three light side and two dark side. Everybody's got a dark side. Do they? Well, according to that song, they do. Hmm. Uh... <laughs> so this guy was named Hadris, right? And I remembered him. Yeah, you know exactly why. You tell me why. 
I did. I told all of you why. Yes, it was a long-winded backstory. Um, so yeah, pretty much Tim was refusing to stand down. Hadris and his men were also refusing to stand down, and it was reaching that critical point of a, you know, kind of a, a standoff where everyone's kind of inching their hands towards their blasters, just waiting for someone to, you know, shoot first. All right. I'll tell Hadris. All right, Hadris. Let's see if you've learned anything. You and me, hand to hand. I'll attempt to coerce him Damn. into a fist fight. Hmm. Fight, uh, fight, fight, fight. Oh, I got to roll fight. to coerce him into a fist fight. That's a really good question. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's... I don't know if you can really coerce somebody into that. Sure you can. It's shame. Well, I mean, what's the penalties if he doesn't go into like the <laughs> the fist fight? Like he goes into an inner shame spiral. I mean, they're <laughs> a skill, so I mean, probably try that. When a character attempts to instill obedience on a target through the use of threats or acts of physical intimidation, they use coercion. Yeah. For example, uh, if the target is questioned or persuaded under conditions of physical captivity, anytime a character issues a threat, whether or not accompanied by hostile actions, he is using coercion against the subject. Yeah, I guess that doesn't really... I am attempting to order him to have a fist fight with me. All right, go ahead and roll your order then. Okay, <laughs> versus what? It's weird to uh, threaten someone right. into uh, a fist fight. If with you want action. my input. Yeah, yeah, sure, Steve, what you got? They're both soldiers, right? They are. Yeah. Perhaps you need to roll leadership then. I mean, it's the same role for me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I mean, if you're going to threaten him, it'll be coercion. If you're going to just order him, it'll be leadership. Listen, if you want to, like, like, maybe, like, Tim is pursuing the argument of, like, this is the only way he could avenge himself for the shame that Tim brought upon him all those years ago. That's, what I, that's exactly what my character just said. What am I rolling against? You're rolling against two reds and a purple. <laughs> I think our shared backstory would make it uh, more likely for him to want this. I don't know. Let me let me check how he's statted because if he's all guns, he probably likes guns. Yeah, but he probably also wants to get back at the old man who beat his face in. You know what the best part is? He's actually statted as your direct counterpart. Yeah. Let's do this. I'm roll these dice. I'm going to Let's shout go. at you in a moment. We, we're not even that far in this session. <laughs> I think my favorite okay. part of it is going to be the whole, like, that's exactly what my character just said. <laughs> I rolled a success, four threats, and a triumph. Nice. So the four <laughs> threats, mm -hmm. you're sizing Hadris up as you're issuing this throw down of the gauntlet as it were he yeah. is clearly in peak physical condition compared to your old body uh-huh so prepare for a lot of setback dice oh definitely <laughs> oh shit making, making me get into a fist fight the guy's got a blaster pistol on his sheet man <laughs> I don't know what your triumph was. So what do you what do you want to do with your triumph? Um, I will tell you what I want to do with my triumph as soon as he starts coming for me. All right. So let's hold for a moment as uh, as this starts. The uh, the two guys, Flo Beth and Drex, they're both about to whip their blasters out. Hadris kind of. Issues a terse laugh and then shrugs. <laughs> All right, old man. If you really think you can take me, we can uh, we can certainly duke it out again. Maybe I'll do you a favor and 
make the other side of your face look as uh, revolting as the other half. Right know, back at you, Hadris. Yeah, I know, I know. You did this to me, so I look forward to returning the favor. Then come oh, on. Man. Drop that gun and I put would. up your dukes. I, no, I already said I would. At this point, you're just uh, you're pressuring me a little too much. I feel like people in your generation like to really pressure people in my generation. You look down on us a lot. You, uh, you know. Maybe you know, if you got stuff done and didn't talk so much, let's get wow. dancing. Wow. And you wonder why I had to join the voice of Stiathum. All right. All right. So in the meantime, uh, Steve, what has Watcher really been up to if he's not dead in a body bag? Well, he is dead in a body bag. Later, guys. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> kidding, kidding. The part of Watcher will now be played by an electronic keyboard. An Ele- electronic <laughs> keyboard. What do you want to do with your action, electronic keyboard? I mean, if that was Watcher's actual voice, I would tune in every week to watch. <laughs> uh, no, Watcher probably returned to the ship to do some sort of manner of research, uh, but then was rudely interrupted by these uh, fine, upstanding gentlemen. Hired uh, he likely had some sort of... huh? Hired goons. Hired goons. These fine, upstanding hired goons. And uh, likely had some sort of camera on watch just in case. And, well, once he saw some people coming with uh, dark intent, he probably hid in one of these smuggling compartments of the yesterday. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good uh, hiding spot to me. And he has at least two cups of noodles with him that he is eating at the moment. So... Going to be severely constipated, but well nourished. Exactly. Question mark. Not really nourished at all. Just carb heavy. Sustained. So how did you get the hot water in the smuggling compartment, or did you eat them raw? I mean, he made it prior to going in there. It's just that he took them with him. So how I mean, paint us a story. How did he manage to get into the compartment while holding two cup noodles that were, you know, probably close to spilling? I, I mean, come on, he put them on the floor and then he, you know, uh, raised the grate and he slid himself in there and put the took took the cups and set them on the floor of the compartment and then pulled the grate back over him. It's not that hard. Damn, what a pro! <laughs> He's done this before, clearly. And that's and that's at the end of the flashback is like a set of boots walk right over the grate as it closes. Hey, what was that sound? I don't know. You're hearing things. And then this long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your choice as to when you want to enter the phrase. So I guess we're going to go into combat unless you guys want to try to resolve this outside of a bunch of dice throws. Mm, nah. Nah. Why All right, so for, uh, for my triumph, when it's Hatteras' turn, I would like for him to be so excited to punch me in the face that he throws his gun away. Sure. All right. Let's roll some initiative. I mean, I feel like that's my character, though. You're telling me how to play my character. It's a little... It's a triumph, Smug. It's a little hurtful. I get a despair. You can tell me to throw my gun away. Oh, I will. Don't think that I won't. (laughs) (laughs) I'll make you throw your gun so far away. Yeah. All right. I'm glad the triumph could be used on the fucking initiative roll. That's great. I'm so glad. Uh, That wasn't right. (laughs) I had quite a few dice. Wow. You're so good. Uh, let me that. delete that one real quick. Yeah. Go again. Yeah, that uh, probably was hung over from a month ago. See, the best <laughs> part is that you had all those dice and there still wasn't a fucking success among them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Three success, one advantage. All right. Those are all my good rolls out of the way for tonight. Time to get my face pounded in. Ooh, mm. face pounded. And that's the way we like it. Wow, did I really snap these guys that badly? I guess I did. Like that badly for us? 
Uh, as far as their initiatives go, it's pretty bad. Oh, uh, well. Like, like Flobeth, what are you doing, buddy? We don't want to ruin his flow. Beth? Oh, see, this guy's got everything. You gotta watch oh. out Drex. You gotta watch out Captain Drex. Drex matched me roll for roll there. Wait until you see what Hadris the Octopi does. So what the how do we resolve that if both of us have three successes and one advantage? Like one PC and one NPC. Uh, we will play rock, paper, scissors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I thought from the book that the tie would typically go to the player character unless like it's like a nemesis or someone so important, in which case like a boss like wins the tie. All right. But I could be misremembering that with another system. There's too many. My gut was also that the player would uh, would seize the initiative. That makes sense. But anyway, Octopi Hadris rolled four successes in advantage of so we've got an NPC slot first, regardless. Yes, indeed. And we'll see whether or not I need to bring the fourth NPC into things. Yeah, use the fourth. <laughs> May the fourth be with you? Mm -hmm. Can't beat that. Well, I mean, if it comes in, then it will have shown remarkable foresight. You know, to have that ah. prepared. What did you just say? <sighs> just some good forethought on our GM's part. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. Got an NPC slot first. What are you going to do, Smug? Yes. Yes, we do. So Captain Drex is going to start things off for the NPCs, the away team here. So the one hand that he had floating over his blaster comes away and he performs a rather neat combat roll forward, bracing up against one of the crates that uh, where they were they were here earlier. It's not yeah. actually something that's come out of your ship. The red crates are, though. So keep that in mind. You guys probably know that because you love red crates. Inside My crates. Of your ship. It's all about the red crates. I sometimes stack them into a crate dragon. It's like so my will. My so will to play <laughs> gradually <laughs> departing. So Drex rolls up on that uh, up on that crate. Leaving through my mouth. He rubs himself all up on it like a cat. Is that, is that Drex's whole turn or? Did he bring something else to the party. No, he pulls his blaster pistol out, which will be his second action because he doesn't have a quick draw. Oh, too bad. Indeed, he should have had his weapon out already. That's him. Yeah, I don't think anybody pulled their guns. I uh, I had a stun grenade in hand. <laughs> so that's what Drex does in that split second of action there. So we'll move over to a PC slot. I'm going to wait until Hadris approaches me, because I don't think he can get all the way up to me in one turn. No, he cannot. So someone else can go. Uh, I'll do it. Go. All right. I'll go last. Where can I go from here? Can I go to this table? Is the yep. table within my zone reach? Yeah, you can make it to the table. Uh, if you wanted to, you could probably get just past the table to that barrel as well. Don't go to the barrel. And gonna... arguably, you could probably mm, you could probably make it to like the other side of Drex's crate. I'm gonna slam up on this table. <laughs> And with my uh, other part, I'm going to knock it over and just, you know. Yeah. Nice. And, and yeah, 
that's yeah, that's so you, me. Yeah, you create that cover. You kind of like bring your shoulder up under it. You topple it. It's not your first rodeo in space. And because it's all John Carpenter. As he's doing it, you hear. Because that's what happens in those movies. <laughs> Tim looks up at the sound system. What? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so someone has hacked into the sound system. Good job, B. Davis. You made Ash laugh. Great. <laughs> so the contents that were on the table just go flying forward and, you know. Time's still going by very slowly. So Flobeth will be the next person to act. <laughs> I forgot his name was Flobeth. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. Is that his surname or his family name? I, I guess that's the same thing. The question is dumb because those are both the same thing. <laughs> that's a good question, isn't it? So Flobeth is a huge man. You can tell by his token. He is a toppling, burly sort. And he reaches over his shoulder and he takes out the rather large vibro axe that he has strapped to his back. And he begins just walking across the hangar towards the group at large. Oh, good. That's comforting. Oh, I nearly moved the ship. You don't want to move the ship? Not yet. You gotta take your ship. No, I like that ship. Right it's on. Don't you to steal your ship. Stop him. Uh, no, you can't. So that's what Flobeth does. He goes with the flow and we come to a series of PC slots. Okay, I'll act next. Vec. Stein grenade in hand, looks at the man with the vibro axe. Her two brains are processing the regret for these life actions right now. <laughs> There's a lot of regret buried in here. <laughs> An incidental look over to Jason, who has taken that cover. <laughs> a look over to this. Over here, there seems to be just like a like a like a zoned off, like a, a cordoned off area, like no one trespasses in this. Yeah, so there's a lot of like pressure in the air over there. Yeah. A bunch of murderous intent. Like, like she does not want to get in the way of whatever the hell's about to happen. <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm kiss. I'm gonna kiss. Yeah, so which leaves Vec alone, standing out here without any cover, with the vibro axe guy. Mm -hmm. Looks down at the sun grenade in her hand. <laughs> Uses an incidental to aim the stun grenade. Aim it good. She's and, just got uh, math floating in front of her eyes. Yeah, like <laughs> like she's got like a protractor that she's drawn like it with her mind's eye. And I'm gonna use my action to throw the stun grenade at Flobeth. All right. I presume he's in short range. He's indeed in uh, in short range. Right, so that would just be one purple then versus yes, my combat check. And I have a boost die from the aim as I'm sizing up, like, make sure you don't throw this over him. He's a large target. You can just bounce it off him. It's not a big deal. It's yep. not a big deal. Don't panic. <sighs> okay. So I have the one advantage there uh, that is not enough for me to trigger my blast or my disorient. Uh, but that is a hit, and with the success, that'll do nine points of damage. Of stun damage. Of stun damage. As the as the grenade goes arcing through the air, to land like basically like clang off like the vibro X and fall right at Flobeth's feet. And what kind of a sound does it make as it goes off? I, you know, it's probably like. It's probably like how Marvin the Martian wanted his earth-shattering kaboom only ends up being grenade form. So it probably really fucking hurts the ears. It's a sound that I can't make right now because I have nodules on my vocal oh, cords. Sorry, sorry. I just really wanted you to make the sound and then I remembered, oh crap, no, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> 
It's a very lengthy sound from the younger days. It, great, it explodes pretty yeah, much no. in Flobeth's face. Yeah. I liked how anyway. it puttered off at the end there. <laughs> well, all good things must. Uh, so he just kind of staggers backwards. He is definitely reeling in that moment as the cacophony of sound and light and whoop, 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 I don't know, uh, wash over his burly frame. Okay. I will use my advantage to kick a boost die to the next player character. That will right. end Dr. Vex's turn. All right, so we'll move to the next PC slot. Who wants to take it? Um, it's got to be Tim if uh, Watcher's going last. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, so Tem looks over and sees Jason getting uh, huddling up under that table, which is a good move. And he sees Dr. Vec standing there in the middle of the room, which is not such a good move. Um, so Tem is he's going to make a leadership check here. Uh, and I'm going to use my ability, which is Field Commander. Ooh. Finally get to use one of my actual abilities from my class. Yeah, you use that talent. All right, let's see. I need a two diamond, an average leadership check. I'm going to do it. Just you wait. Oh, is uh, yours just field commander? And, uh, yeah. This, this will have a boost I attached because you're the next PC making a check. Yeah, I saw that, so I'm adding that in too. Yeah, Hydras has improved Field Commander. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, I could not find my dice pool for a second. That was embarrassing. You can just edit that out in post. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, two successes and four advantages. Uh, so, for Field Commander, a number of allies equal to Presence may immediately suffer one strain to perform one free maneuver. So, uh, all of you, every every uh, ally, everyone on the field, including Watcher, even though he may not know I'm there, you can take a strain and perform a maneuver. So what Tim's going to say is, Dr. Vic, you got to get into cover. You can't just stand around out here. And Jason, okay. Jason, draw a bead on that. On that uh, Colossus over there. This is my suggestions that Vec move and Jason use aim. Okay, Vec is totally very capable at, uh, at combat awareness, so her idea of cover is like right in here. Oh gosh, she's <laughs> using Jason as cover. <laughs> she's using our ally, the non-combat guy, like, standing behind right. him. Ned is also going to hear these inspirational words, and he is going to move and huddle at the table also. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad that happened. Tim just that the, kind of frowns. The monkey thing that's with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so I've got four advantages. Oh, what can I do with that? Oh, boy. That's a lot of advantages. I guess while uh, Arp's thinking about that, uh, Watcher will clearly be able to hear the voice of Tim due to the fact that, of course, the uh, yesterday is open at the moment. So uh, the voice is, you know, filtering in pretty good. So following that, uh, he'll get out of the compartment. Does anyone have the advantages thing open? I don't no, know. I don't. Yes. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you what they are. Oh, so petty. <laughs> um, I mean, you can do a lot of things. For one, you can recover strain. You can pass boost die along. For two, you can start giving setback out to the uh, anyone, in fact. Three oh, that's a good upgrade. idea. Yeah, for three, you can do... Well, you can uh, add defense to people. You can make people drop a weapon, although I don't think that would really work in this scenario. He makes... Uh, very startled. He makes Hadris drop voice. his fists. <laughs> <laughs> Hadris starts bleeding profusely. Um, I'm going to give... Um, or I'm going to upgrade, I think, Flobeth's next check because he's feeling a little bit... Uh, 
outclassed. It's like, oh, there's someone on the field who knows what they're doing. Maybe this won't be as much of a cakewalk as they said. That introduced a little bit of uncertainty into his step. Yeah, That's, we'll uh, give him we'll give him a setback. Well, that would be two. It would be upgrade would be three, right? Or would that be? Uh, the upgrade part, they're actually saying that's a triumph. Yeah. Oh, all right. Upgrade difficulty is mm. targeted as a triumph. Um, I must have misheard. So, well, anyway, we'll give two. them a setback. That, that'd be two. Yeah, and uh, I guess I can use the other two to give Drex. How are we pronouncing his name? Drex. Drex. We'll give Drex a similar setback. Perhaps they're they're starting to feel like this old guy well they don't know he's old this guy who's in black clone or arc trooper armor might actually be more dangerous than they thought no nah, they know he's old hadris called him old like 15 times yeah but i mean old minute. old to someone from hadris's generation is like 30 yeah that's pretty fair old man oh all right so those two will have an additional setback die uh, on their next rolls. Jolly good show. Now, are you doing anything with your maneuver? Um, I'm also going to... Well, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I am watching Hadris very carefully, which I think will equate to an aim action. Okie doke. I wonder how long that lasts for. It um it has to be like basically like his next action either has to be another aim or like it has to be an attack. Like if he doesn't yeah. attack, it's gone. Yeah. You totally could have mounted or dismounted a vehicle or animal too. Well, there does appear to be a little segue over here. Or you could have like taunted him and dropped prone and started doing the worm. Yeah, well, <laughs> not Tim. All right, Watcher, it's your turn. <laughs> All right. So having uh, used Tim's booming voice distraction to get himself out of the uh, smuggler's compartment within the yesterday, uh, Watcher's going to head on up to the gunner chair in the yesterday while mm -hmm. sipping his uh, cup noodle. Watcher. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be more funny for you than it will be for us. Nah, it'll be funny, period. That's a good uh, that's a good action, Steve. Well done. Well, that is a good move. Uh the action yeah, itself though. You or uh will it take two maneuvers to get there or one? Eh, probably just one. I don't think the ship's that big to be honest. Alright. Uh the other one, I didn't want to like shoot this round because I wanted to take a moment to have Watcher think over his cup of noodles as he's walking. Uh, yeah, about yeah. everything he's learned about uh, Flobeth and Hadris and Drex. I mean, he spent some quality time. The the other thing you probably have to like get the gunnery gun laser things ready to fire. That's fine. We'll count that as well as you're indulging in the wafting hotness of cup noodle. He gets into the seat, and the seat, like, for some reason, lifts up a couple inches, and just... Yeah, it's got to adjust to his height. He's real short. Mm -hmm. I can't believe we managed to get two sponsors for the show in one night. Cup Noodle also <laughs> coming on board. <laughs> All right, so uh, the last NPC turn for our first round of combat, which I think only took two hours. So Hadris is going to go ahead and uh, start walking. God, I'm trying to move the fucking ship again. I'm just going to move that to the GM layer. That will work. No, now you can't see it. That's a good <laughs> move, man. That's a good move. Oh, Theater of the mind. Later. Theater of the mind. There we go. I got it. I got it. All right, so Hadrius just kind of casually starts strolling up. So he moves into short range from Tem. All right. And he dropped his gun back there by the ship, right? 
He did. He did. He good, just like good. casually flipped it away. I'm not going to count that as one of his actions because you're it's your triumph. Cool. His action, however, is for him to open his mouth. And a and xenomorph going... comes out. Yes, that's right. Tinier Hadra's face comes out of his mouth. And then that mouth opens and a cup noodle comes out of oh my goodness. the third head. We're going to get sued by cup noodle. <laughs> a cease and desist, yeah, probably. Uh, but his mouth Stop opens. Stop talking about our noodles. You don't have the right to our noodle. How dare you? We, put, we spend so much time on R&D for our cup noodles. But Hadris's mouth opens and he begins unleashing a scathing tirade directed oh, at no. him. Oh, my heart. Well, we'll see. So he has improved scathing tirade. So I got to do a, uh, a two purple coercion check. Okay. I'm going to make you feel so much strain. Is that like opposed to my discipline or what? Uh, I don't think it is. Pardon? Nope. Sounds, like, sounds like it's just one of his abilities. Oh, okay, he just does the thing. He just does the thing. Because he's trying to hurt you emotionally. Yeah. Crap, what did I say? Leadership? No, coercion. Coercion. We'll get there. Yeah, one of these days. Get so many windows open. Also, it's it's fine if we do go away from Cup Noodle. We can just go to Marochin. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, you yeah, don't want to mess with those guys. Uh, I just want to put that brick in my mouth. <laughs> I've been boiling it. All right. Uh, so he's actually going to inflict three strain on you, Tem. Oh yeah. Yeah, one for the success, and then uh, that, that he can spend his done? advantages no, 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 for wait, the wait. extra. No, I didn't give him a setback. Okay. My apologies, my apologies. Hmm? Hmm? Never mind. It was a mistake. We can move on. All right. I don't know if I can now. Metal Gear. <laughs> my immersion's gone. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just like a brutal tirade that he just starts bad mouthing everything about Tim. He was a terrible leader. He's leading his current team to their deaths. And he's old and he's ugly. Mm -hmm. And Hadris mm -hmm. is gonna make sure that he dies alone here today. I mentioned his ear hair. Oh it's just gonna get ugly. Yeah. yeah. He, he points out that Tim's mustache also incorporates the hair coming out of his nose. <laughs> Mm -hmm, Whoa. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of disgusting old man facts that end up being remarkably correct. Of course. Of course. So we get back to the top of the initiative order. So an NPC is going to go. Flobeth is going to be the one who does it. And he's gonna he's gonna walk up to you guys. He recovers from being slightly staggered. But uh, obviously not that staggered. He is a burly individual with a lot of gusto. Yes, hey, can I play Yu-Gi-Oh with you guys? <laughs> I don't appreciate that you guys knocked all of our stuff off that table. So how about I ask you a question? Oh. Which makes no sense, but that's the kind of man that Flobeth is. The vibro axe hums in his hands as he brings it cleaving in an overhead downwards. To be fair, oh, I yes. might make shitty puns Thank too you. if I just got hit with a stun <laughs> grenade. <laughs> oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, he didn't have a lot of brains to begin with, and now look at him. He, thought... so he brings it down in a overhead motion towards our good friend Jason. Floba thinks back to the the one time that he heard someone make a I'm gonna ax you a question pun while they were swinging an axe, and he just uses that every time, whether it makes sense or not, because he thought it was so cool. Yeah, which, is, 
it's it basically doesn't. Jason from that episode of Home Movies where he <laughs> keeps adding the jokes after they're no longer funny. Poor Flo Beth. <laughs> All right, so he's going to step back, die, and Jason is, of course, in cover, so he gets another one. Sure. Two setback, two purple, and you can't stack. So if you have any defense, I don't think it counts here. Um. Well, I definitely have defense, but it doesn't count. It doesn't How count, much defense so do you have? Against melee. Uh, I mean, you know what? Actually, I don't have defense. I just have soak. So. You liar. I am a fucking liar. You lying son of a bitch. I, I'm sorry. I thought I, I thought I did. Oh, you still got a success. Oh, what does that mean? It means that it's going to hurt just a wee, a wee little bit. <laughs> 